That was much better. Thank you all. Hey, a few short announcements. Wednesday night, supper at 5.30 here. Um, what is that, $10, $5, $10 a plate? $10 a plate. Um, we are having spaghetti. Is that correct? We're having spaghetti. And for anyone that doesn't eat spaghetti, I believe we're going to have some chicken tenders and stuff like that. So please come join us. We've had a good time. Uh, we've had adults and kids out there playing football and volleyball and all kinds of stuff. So y'all come fellowship with us. Uh, Sunday, is that next Sunday? Today, today Sunday, uh, there will be a kids roping at 6, and that's a devotional, correct? Kids small group, I apologize, a kids small group here at 6. Um, the following Saturday, yeah, September 16th at 5 p.m. with the next youth rodeo event will be here. Cheston, raise your hand right there. There you go. He loves it when I do that. Uh, if you want more information about that, see him, please. Um, also, next, I don't know what day that is, the 24th, the 24th, there will be a ladies' tea, that will be at 7 a.m. here, yep, here, so y'all wake up bright and early. For the men that missed the uh, men's breakfast this morning, we had a good time, heard a great message, so y'all, next time we do that, y'all try to make it out, it was a great time. Um, let's see, I think that's all I got, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, this morning, oh God, just thank you for allowing us to be here. God, thank you for your presence being in this barn today. Thank you for allowing us to be excited to worship you. God, please move our feet, move our hands, lift our voices. God, please allow us to hear the message in the song. God, this morning, I pray that you get me out of the way when I, when I come and do a message. God, just, God, don't don't allow me to put words in there that you wouldn't have. God, please just remove me from that. God, please just, just flow through me and get me out of the way. God, this morning I want to pray for the people that are lost, that are sick, that are hurting, people that don't know you, God. I pray that they come to find you, that they make a relationship with you, God. God, that they don't just keep you at arm's distance, they keep you as a stranger. God, I pray that they start walking with you and truly get to know you. And God, this morning I pray that you would Allow us to hear whatever words you would have to say. Lord, your son's name I pray. Amen. Y'all stand and worship with us this morning.
I'm glad that they just went with it because I completely missed uh, my cue because I was out of breath. So, whew, thank you. But you know what? Nobody would ever know if you wouldn't have told them. So <laughs> thanks for that. I got, I got to be honest. I got to be honest. But Jesus shines through our, make, our mistakes. I right about that. <laughs> he shines a lot in my life then. <laughs> I can tell you.
I hope y'all ain't tired of seeing me this morning. Y'all gonna see me for about 30 more minutes. <clears throat> Can y'all hear me good? Sam? All right. Sorry, I was having some, ooh, that was loud. We're going to get this adjusted. This thing don't fit my head. If y'all can't tell, it don't go all the way to this ear. So if I start getting a little quiet, y'all got to holler at me, throw something at me. We'll, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all could tell. This morning, woo, it's some struggles. God has been, been moving lately. God has been, been showing out here at this church. We've been growing in in ways that it's hard to even imagine and I'm not just talking numbers I'm talking spiritually it has been growing exponentially there has been conversations had there have been been people's feet moving that were once trapped in concrete that couldn't move God is showing out so when God shows out Satan tries to throw these these arrows at us these fiery darts at us Oh, man, but God gives us a chance to dodge them. He gives us these shields to protect us, right? So this morning, let's use those shields to protect against those fiery darts that Satan wants to throw. We're not going to let this church stand still. God's not going to let this church stand still because he set it in motion, and nobody's going to stop it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, this morning, oh, God, if we can feel you moving, God, we can feel this place growing. God, I pray that you keep that on track. God, I thank you that we can't do anything to stop that. We can't mess it up. There's nothing we can do to get in the way. So God, use us as your vessels. Push us forward when all we think we can do is drag our feet. God, show us new paths and new ways to go when we, when we have a roadblock in front of us. But God, most importantly... We're not going to let Satan win. We're not going to let fear take over. We're not even going to let him on this property. God, we pray that he is pushed out of here today. No matter what it is that he's trying to do, God, it will not prevail. But God, your light will shine. And God, we thank you for that. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, oh, this is going to be fun. Matt messes with me and I get picked on a little bit because I usually... I don't know, God God likes to mess with me, I think. I usually get those, these messages that I feel like I need to be wearing steel-toed boots because my toes are getting stepped on. And so, therefore, when my toes get stepped on, God tells me to step on your toes. It ain't me, though. It's God, I promise you. I'll step on your toes if he tells me to step on your toes. But it's God's words that's stepping on you. But this morning is going to be a little bit different. And it's been kind of one of those messages that, I'm, I'm not even going to lie, God hit me with this when I was watching TikTok. There's so much stuff on TikTok. There's a lot of cat videos or whatever. I don't know. There's all kinds of mess on TikTok that is it's not good for the kingdom of God. But every now and then you come across one that just makes you think. It gets those wheels turning. And God said, hey, buddy, that's the one. You're like, really? That's the one? That's what we're going to choose to talk about? That's what you're going to throw at me? All right, God. Because I've done the running. I figured out that don't work for me, so I do what I'm told. So this morning, we're going to get a little, little bit controversial, and it's going to be fun. Don't get mad at me for a minute. Y'all got to stick with me. Y'all got y'all to hear the message first, okay? Don't, don't walk out till it's over. I promise it's going to be good. How many people know what the rainbow represents? I need some hands here. If you know what it means, throw up your hands. All right, you might kind of see where this, this message. Learned about it two Wednesday nights ago. Where's the kids at? They're in there, ain't they? The kids know. Huh? Is that better? All right. Don't need to repeat what I said. All right. I said, how many people know what the rainbow means, what it represents? Right. Majority of us. Most of us know. So you can kind of see where this message might be going. We're going to be talking about the rainbow. Now, that can't be controversial, can it? Oh, yeah. So, some say, we're going to step into it. I'm not going to ease into it. We're going to jump into it. Some say it represents the LBGTQRS. I don't know all the numbers, letters for it. I'm sorry. Some say it represents that, right? Had this nice, pretty little flag that, that looks like a, a beautiful rainbow. It don't match the rainbow. Its colors are a little different, Right? 
But they, they used this symbol. And it, but, a little history lesson, it wasn't adopted for that until 1978. Does anybody know when the original rainbow popped out? I can't give you an exact date, but I promise you it was way before 1978. So, like I said, a little history. The flag originally had eight colors. We're going to get into a little bit of detail with that. I'm not, we're not going to dive too much into it. There's still kids present. But the eight colors were hot pink, red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, indigo, and violet. They all had a representation. They all meant something at that point, 1978. Remember that, okay? <clears throat> so the one we see today has six, has six colors in it. Originally eight, now has six. There, was on, there are only six now because they were having trouble with producing this flag. They were having trouble getting two of the colors, okay? I can't, hot pink and turquoise, I believe. They had a hard time getting those two colors. So now we're down to six colors. Six colors. That's important. Keep that in mind, okay? I'll say it one more time. Six colors. I promise I'm getting somewhere. In Genesis 9, Ver, chapter 9, verses 9 through 17, says, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants with, and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will floodwaters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. Then God said, I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come i have placed my rainbow in the clouds it is the sign of my covenant with you and all the earth when i send clouds over the earth the rainbow will appear in the clouds and i'll remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures never again will the flood waters destroy all life when I see the rainbow in the clouds, I remember the eternal covenant between God and every living creature on earth. Then God said to Noah, yes, this rainbow is the sign of the covenant I am confirming with all the creatures on earth. I mean, I don't know if y'all was paying attention, but it said covenant a lot. If it repeats something over and over again, maybe it might ought to stick with us. It says covenant a lot. That's God's promise to us. Like, hey, we're not gonna, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to flood the earth. I'm not going to destroy all life with this water. The rainbow is a promise, is a covenant with people, with mankind, and with animals alike. Now, God created the original rainbow. We got that. We got, we're going to call it God's rainbow for right now, okay? <clears throat> Originally, it was called bow. Now, I, couldn't, I can't confirm or deny this. I have looked and tried to find it, but I've heard tell that hanging a bow, when a warrior came home from war, he would hang a bow on his mantle. His bow, to represent that it was finished. The war was over. There is peace. Now, whether that's true or not, it sure sounds good, so I'm sticking with it. God hung his bow over the earth for peace. It's finished. He's made his promise. He will not do that again. Okay? So, now, God created the original rainbow. Originally, just called a bow, like I said. And one thing's for sure, he had absolutely no production issues. Would you like to know, how many people know how many colors are in God's rainbow? How many? Seven. There are seven colors in God's rainbow. Now, God has a sense of humor, but he also has a purpose, okay? He knew one day someone would try to make a mockery of his promise. He knew that thousands of years ago, okay? Have any of you ever studied Revelation? Not, not, I'm, yes or no? Yes, yes, some, yes. Revelation is scary. I get it. My youth right here, I'm about to ask you all a question. Don't think you're hiding. Numbers and symbols represent things. Numbers mean something a lot of times in Revelation. What's number seven represent? Perfection. God's rainbow is Perfect. Seven colors, number of perfection. God's rainbow is perfect. How many, how many stripes or colors did the, the pride flag have? Six. Told y'all remember that, right? Six. What's the number six represent? Huh? Imperfection. It falls short. Tell me God don't have a sense of humor. 
They couldn't find those two colors to add the two extra colors to that flag. It knocked it down to six, telling me God didn't have a hand in that. That ain't perfection. Number six, number six ain't perfection. God's rainbow is perfect. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, we're going to lead into, I'm going to read a lot into Revelation. Don't let me lose you. It's not meant to, we're not going to dive too deep into it because we would be here for probably an entire year trying to study a few books of Revelation. Revelation gets real deep, so we're going to kind of skim the surface today. But in Revelation, it tells us that Satan wants to be like God. The Antichrist wants to appear like God to fool people. Okay? Now, tracking with me so far, I see a lot of about to go to sleep. I'll start hollering if I need to. I'm echoing, I can hear it. All right. So Satan wants to imitate God. Satan wants to fool people into thinking he is God. So, rainbow flag, God's rainbow. Close, but not the same. Now, that flag represents 7.2% of people in the world. In the world, 7.2%. Yet, I guarantee you, you can't turn on the TV, look at the news, open your phone without seeing it. 72 he is putting it out there. Satan is putting it out there because he wants in your face. How many people does God's rainbow represent? Anybody? Huh? Everybody. It represents everybody. It is God's covenant to all of us, to everyone on earth, young, old, new, gone, future. It doesn't matter. It's to everyone. God's flag literally represents 100% of every man that will ever walk this earth. Every man, woman, or child, excuse me. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go into some examples. We talked about Satan really wants to look like God, really wants to fool people, right? So, we're going to dive off into Revelation. Like I said, don't get too lost into it. We'll, we'll, we'll just skim the top. But in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 4, it says, Then I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns, with ten crowns on its horns. And written on each head were names that blasphemed God. The beast looked like a leopard, but it had the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and great authority. I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded, beyond recovery. Let's stick there. Wounded beyond recovery. What happens when something's wounded beyond recovery? It dies. It's dead. No more. Okay. But the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast. They worshiped the dragon for giving the beast such power, and they also worshiped the beast, who is as great as the beast, they exclaimed, who is able to fight against him. Okay, so we've got, I told y'all, we're going we're gonna to skim it. we got seven-headed beast. One of them is dead, and it gets brought back to life. It is healed miraculously. Where have we seen that? Where have we seen someone die and then come back? Jesus. Y'all can talk, I promise. I'll give you the microphone. I'll bring it out there. So Jesus, we've seen Jesus die and then come back three days later. What is Satan trying to do? He's trying to look like Christ. He's going to do everything he can to simulate, to, to emulate God. So we have what once was dead and now brought back to life. That's one example of God Im, uh, Satan imitating God. There are numerous verses about Jesus being resurrected. Tons of them, okay? We go in John, Acts, Matthew. You can read them. I would spend hours up here. I promise you, I spent hours reading them last night and a few days. Like, we, we can spend a while on that, but we're not. We, 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 we know, okay? So, another example. This comes in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. Then I saw another beast come up out of the sea. He had two horns like those of a lamb, but he spoke with the voice of a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast, and he required all the earth and its people to worship the first beast whose fatal wound had now been healed. He did astonishing miracles, even making fire flash down to earth from the sky while everyone was watching, and with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the beast. He deceived all the people who belonged to this world. 
He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast who was fatally wounded and then he came back to life. He was then permitted to give life to the statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that everyone refusing to worship it must die. He required everyone small and great. All right, I want you all to listen. We're going to tune in on this part, okay? He required everyone small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let those who with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of man of a man. He is number six six six. We hear a lot about the mark of the beast. We do. We we think everything's the mark of the beast. We we look for these signs, we look for these symbols of, of what's coming. We don't know, we can't figure it out. God knows. Ain't no sense in stressing about it, okay? If you know where you're going, we ain't going to worry about, about where all this is coming from, okay? We're not worried about that, the end times. God said he's going to protect us no matter what, okay? So let's not dwell on that. But we're going to talk about this mark. So Satan decides to give people a mark so they could buy, sell, trade, live, essentially, right? Why well, am I talking about the mark? Because you, know you know who else marks his people? God marks his people. Okay, we're going to go into Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. It says, And I saw another angel coming up from the east, carrying the seal of the living God. And he shouted to those four angels who had been given power to harm the land and see, Wait, don't harm the land or the sea or the trees until we have placed the seal of God on the foreheads of his servants. Satan just trying to look like God again. Satan is marking his people. God said, hold up, I got my people and I'm protecting them. We got God's mark. Okay? God marks his people. Another example of that is in Revelation chapter 9, verses 3 through 6. Then locusts came from the smoke and descended on the came from the smoke and descended on the earth, and they were given power to sting like scorpions. They were told not to harm the grass or plants or trees, but only the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were told not to kill them, but to torture them for five months with pain like the pain <coughs> of, long, of a scor scorpion sting. In those days, people will seek death, but death will not find it. Seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. So we've got that promise of God's mark again. Okay? God's going to mark his people. And I feel like I've misread something. Give me one second. Okay, that was my bad. I read that a little bit <clears throat> fast. So, so God has us marked. And God's telling the, the, the plague not to, the, the locust not to attack God's people. The people without the mark are the people that's going to go through this. I said, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. Sometimes my brain gets faster than my mouth. I apologize. Um, so anyway, we've got God promising his mark, okay? We've got the mark of God. Again, Satan trying to look like God and throw marks on people. <clears throat> so we're going to go into Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. It says, how are, how are you fallen from heaven? I'm sorry. How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest depths. Satan, again, trying to be like God. And in this sense, he doesn't want to just be like God. He wants to be higher than God. He wants to be better than God. He's like, hey, I'm going to elevate myself above God here. Okay, so time and time again, we're seeing Satan. He wants so bad to be God, but he can't handle it. He can't have it because God reigns forever. It's God's place. Okay? Satan wants to be higher than God, wants to be better than God. But all Satan is is a cheap imitation. Just a cheap imitation. He works so hard to bring people to his side. Like, he, he is working so hard to bring people in. Like, I'm going to deceive these people. I'm going to make them look like what I want them to look like. So I've got more warriors. I've got more fighters. I've got people that's with me, okay? You know what Satan never read? 
You want to know, you know one thing? Satan knows the Bible. Satan knows God's words. I promise you that. He used them against Jesus. He tried to tempt Jesus. He knows the Bible. But you know where Satan's Bible obviously ends? Apparently it ends in Jude. Because he doesn't see what's coming. He doesn't know what his final resting place is going to be. It's going to be the end. <clears throat> so, and, but because he... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so, Satan's trying to be like God. He has no place to go, okay? He only has the power that we give to him. Don't give him that power. <clears throat> so, don't let the things of this world, the things that we see that look so innocent, like a rainbow flag, just throwing that out there. I, I want everybody to know, hey, I'm not picking on anybody this morning, okay? I'm not. But it is what it is. Satan tries to do these little things to slowly introduce it, to slowly make it okay, to where they enter our house and, oh, it's just this, or oh, it's just that. He wants them to be subtle. He don't want you to notice it at first. He wants to be in there before he makes those big leaps, okay? They'll be subtle, they'll be slow as to not alarm you. You think Satan can't creep in when you're not paying attention. Look around, look what's happening on your TV and on your phones and just in everyday life. <clears throat> i tell you this right now. You better get prayed up. You better know what God's Word says because He warns us. He gives us Satan's playbook. He tells us everything that we need to know about how to defend it, about what Satan's going to attack us with. Do you know your Bible well enough to know that that's what Satan's doing? Do you know what God's words say so that we can keep that out of our households? It starts with something as simple as a pretty little rainbow flag. Something that distorts God's promise. Something that distorts God's word. <clears throat> we, consider, we can literally see what Satan is going to throw at us. But we have to read it. You're not going to know it just coming here on Sundays and hearing it for 30 minutes. You're not. You've got to take it home. You've got to read it. You've got to open it for yourself. Don't think these things are part of growth. Don't be fooled because they're just normal now. It's not normal. God did not design that. Satan did. And the lack of God in our schools, in our society, is the reason that it's prevalent. We did that. We allowed that slowly, but it happened. We allowed God to be removed out of everything, and evil crept in. Guys, this time, as, as we as Christians stand up. We have to say enough is enough. Quit taking what God did and let it be evil. Stop taking what God did and distorting it to represent what you want it to represent. But if we don't make those stands, if we don't say enough is enough, who will? No one. Because the world is okay with it. And that's how Satan wants it. The world belongs to Satan. Christians belong to God. Okay? I got, I got one verse. One verse. And I, I'm glad I, Mr. Charles spoke this morning at the men's thing. And I had to call him. Because I kept struggling. I knew the verse that God kept leading me to. To end this. I was like, God, there's, there's something. like it's, it's, not, it's not finished yet. God, your message, is, I can... I can Almost, it's almost there, but it's not finished. And God kept bringing me to a verse. I'm like, God, that's not it. Well, he brought me back to it. I said, God, that's not it. Well, he brought me back to it. God, that's not it. I'm dumb. Sometimes I have to be told multiple times. And sometimes I have to make a phone call for him to lead me to where the place I need to be is, okay? Sometimes we have to ask people with more experience, people that's been doing it longer, people with more knowledge, because God puts those people in our lives to pick us up when we need it the most. So this verse, okay, normally, listen to me, normally, this Bible verse is meant for marriage. We hear it a lot, okay, we hear it a lot at marriages, at weddings. Let no one split apart what God has joined together. God kept bringing me to it. I'm like, that's not it. That's not it because it has to do with marriage. It doesn't have to do with what I'm talking about. 
Miss Charles said one word, and it just instantly I got it. It made sense to me right then. We, as the church, are the bride. Jesus is the groom. God has brought us together. Let no man separate that. Let nobody come in between that covenant of marriage, that promise of marriage, that promise that we are going to be together. Don't let anybody creep in there. Don't let anybody creep in and spread that, separate that, okay? Read it again. Let no one split apart what God has joined together. Man, that was it. Like, I'm sorry, God. Like you told me four or five, I don't know how many times I, I, I lost count. How many times God was smacking me saying, listen, listen, I gave it to you, but you're not listening. Let no, let no one split apart what God has joined together. We're God's bride. We got to act like it. We got to be ready when Jesus comes back. We can't let people come in and say, oh, this is okay because, you know, God's not watching. This is okay because it's just normal now. This is okay because everybody's doing it. It's not okay. It's not. Okay? Don't let Satan creep in. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, oh God, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for your covenant with us. God, we thank you for those times that we're so hard-headed, we don't want to listen, but you keep pursuing us and you keep telling us your plan. God, this morning, I pray that we receive that message, that, that we don't let Satan creep in and at, the, at our weakest times, at the times we think we're watching. God, I pray that, that those new normals don't become normal in our lives, that we recognize it when it happens. God, this morning, I pray that we can apply this to things that we're already dealing with in life. Something that, well, you might at one point felt like just wasn't right, but we allowed it to happen. God, it's not too late. You tell us it's not too late. We can still change those things. We have a voice. You have our backs. God, allow us to start making those changes in our lives. God, don't allow us to be, to be blind to Satan's attacks. God, allow us to grow. God, push us forward. Lord, this morning, I just want to thank you for getting me out of the way. God, this morning, I want to thank you for, for beating me over the head when I need it the most. When you tell me something over and over and over again, and I'm just too hard-headed to listen, I thank you for not giving up on me. God, I pray that you do that for each and every one of us because there's so many times we're going to run from what we're told. We're going to run from the things that you told us to do. We're going to run from the things that you told us to say. God, I pray that we stop running, that we stand up and we fight and we do what we're told to do, God. God, this morning I pray that you go with us and protect us throughout the rest of this week. God, I pray that we take this message and we use it to fight. We use it in those battlegrounds that we call life, God. God, I love you. I thank you and praise you. Your son's name I pray. Amen. Y'all have an awesome Sunday.